Welcome to Episode 7 of Woo Woo for the Skeptic. I am your host, Kim Pullender. Today we're going to be talking about the feng shui art of energetically clearing a home. What is feng shui? How do you spell that? And why would you plop down money to hire someone to clear your home when burning dried sage works just as well? To find out answers to these burning questions, no pun intended, stay tuned. The ritual of burning herbs to cleanse a space is common in many cultures around the world. Frankincense has been used by the church, Asia is known for their incense, and Native Americans have been using sage for many generations. The Latin word for sage, salvia, stems from the word to heal. The other qualities of sage when burned are giving wisdom, clarity, and increasing spiritual awareness. The practice of smudging, which is using the smoke of sacred herbs, can help clear negative energy from a space. Today's interview will highlight a different type of energetic house clearing using the art of feng shui. Feng shui is an ancient art that was developed many years ago in China. It's a system that reveals how to balance the energies of any given space to assure health and good fortune for people living there. Feng means wind and shui means water. In Chinese culture, wind and water are associated with good health. Feng Shui is based on the Taoist understanding that the land is alive and filled with qi, or energy. Feng Shui space clearing has been made famous by Karen Kingston, who in 1978 pioneered a specific process for energy clearing. Today I will be talking with Wendy Freer, who is an expert in the Feng Shui art of space clearing. When I first became curious about this type of house clearing, I hired Wendy to clear my house. At the time, I didn't know much about energy or why clapping your hands together breaks up stagnant energy. It's not that my home felt like it had a lot of negative energy in it, but I contacted Wendy because A, I was curious, and B, intuitively, I knew it would be greatly beneficial for me. What I liked most about Wendy's process was how an equal amount of time and attention was spent on creating a new energy or intention for the home. And this was more valuable to me than just clearing negative energy. At the time, I was working on paintings for my children's book, and creativity was a big focus for me, as I hadn't painted since I was a child. I was also focusing on intentions around courage and confidence and being seen in a public way, as I used to prefer hiding in the shadows and flying under the radar. My painting and my counseling practice all took place in my home, so I wanted to focus on making the energy in my house as supportive as possible. So this begs the question, did it work? All I can say is I completed my children's book, discovered a love of watercolor painting, and attracted more counseling clients. I believe the intentional energy continues to support me today, long after Wendy's process took place, as everything fell online to start a podcast this year. Now, one could easily argue that I would have achieved all of these things without the house clearing. True. I can only say that I feel it worked because of how I felt in the house and the results that transpired after. Would I do it all over again? Considering where I was at that time and the limited energy training I had, I would do it all over again in a heartbeat. And now on to the interview. Today, I am so happy to be welcoming my guest, Wendy Freer. Wendy is the founder and CEO of Engage the Flow. She is an expert in creating sacred space and in helping people sustain their health and success through proper energy management. She teaches meditation and is also a certified grief recovery specialist. Wendy started her spiritual journey at a very young age, but she didn't know why she was seeking or putting herself on a spiritual path. Wendy was always drawn to meditation and the exploration of consciousness, but her journey also brought her to the study of space clearing, a very specialized branch of feng shui, which we are going to dive into today. Wendy, thank you for being on the show and welcome. Thanks, Kim. It's my pleasure to be here with you. So why don't you tell the listener a little bit about your personal background and how you became involved with energetic house clearings? Okay. 
My journey was more like one of those things where I would take a step and the path would kind of appear under my feet. You know, it's not like, you know, I was 20 years old and going, what do I want to be when I grow up? I want to be a space clearer. (laughs) (laughs) It just sort of happened because I was following my interests and my intuition. And I did have a spiritual teacher when I was younger who did help me see opportunities as they came up. And one of the opportunities that came up was to study space clearing. Space clearing sort of landed in my lap. I didn't really pursue it. I guess it happened because I've always been empathetic to other people's feelings, but also like if I walked into a building or a home, I, it was really easy for me to feel, oh, it feels great in here. Or, oh, it feels kind of creepy in here. A number of years ago, I was working with a, with a healer who was really amazing, and she gave me a feng shui book. She said, you really should read this. And I had no idea why she wanted me to read this book. I loved it, but I had no idea what I was going to do with it. And then after we bought a home, more people started giving me books about creating a harmonious home. And I found some feng shui books. And eventually I just gave in to the idea and I called and decided to start a feng shui profession. And what I found when I went into people's homes was that a lot of the times the way they had their home organized or decorated wasn't particularly against feng shui principles, but sometimes the energy in the house felt really bad. And at that point, I didn't really know what to do about that. So that felt a bit irresponsible to me. So I decided to further my studies by studying space clearing, which is a more specialized branch of feng shui, where you work with the energy in a building rather than placement of the objects in the building. Hmm. Yeah, that's an important distinction. Now, when you say space clearing, I just want to clarify that it's different than clutter clearing, and you do not do clutter clearing, correct? I don't do clutter clearing, and you're right, it's different. And just to simplify that, clutter clearing basically means you're working with the stuff, whatever's building up. Space clearing means you're working with the energy. And it's not that the two don't interface somewhere. They actually do. Because if the energy in a home is very stagnant, of course, you're going to get more clutter built up. But also clutter usually has some emotional underlying reason for why it's there. And often the reasons why people procrastinate or the reasons why they're clutter, they're not bad reasons. A lot of times the reasons are very good. But with space clearing, you could get to that underlying reason for the clutter, and then it's much easier for the person to clear the clutter. Mm, Yeah, so the clutter is more a symptom of the, say, negative energy that might be lingering in a house. Oh, that's a perfect way to put it. Yes, the clutter is a symptom. That's good. I like that. Thanks, Kim. (laughs) (laughs) So how is your method of house clearing different than someone just burning dried sage, or a lot of people burn sandalwood in the home? Yeah, you know, that's a really great question. And it's actually one that I've explored a lot. So what I want to do is I want to set a bit of a context for the answer, though, because the way I look at buildings is buildings actually hold memories. So if something happens in a home or an office, Not just something that happens once or twice, but if something's repetitive or if something's particularly traumatic, it's going to make an imprint into that room or home or building. And so since buildings or homes tend to hold these memories, what I do is I go in and I clear the imprint Now, other methods of house clearing or house blessings do make the house feel better temporarily, but this is a little bit deeper in that it actually, I go, I find the imprint and I clear the imprint so that it doesn't just feel better for a little while. I actually leave my clients with a really clean and vibrant space that then they can, you know, it's like having a... um, a new fresh start. 
Mm -hmm. So when it comes to imprints, this is something that happens in every home? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So let me give you some examples to, to make that a little bit more clear. Once I had a client up in the Bay Area who called me because she was buying a home and she found out that the woman who lived in the home had actually been assaulted in this home that she was looking to buy. And so when I went into the home, she didn't tell me exactly what had happened, but she had said, you know, that there were some traumatic events that happened. It was really clear where the person broke in, where they actually assaulted her. It was like I could feel the imprint of that in the house. Now, you know, it's not that uncommon for people to pick up on these imprints. Like pretty much anybody knows that saying, you know, you could cut the tension in the room with a knife. After people have an argument, there's something that lingers in the space for a while. And that's where that um, saying came from. Like there's an argument, you can feel the tension. Now that tension, depending on if it's something that happens again and again, that tension doesn't just dissipate. It sort of spreads a little bit. Maybe you don't feel it in the center of the room anymore because people are walking through the center. But towards the edges of the room, which is when I do a space clearing, you know, that's where I do most of my work is along the periphery of the house and the edges of the room, corners and stuff like that. That's where these imprints or memories are held most often. But sometimes with a really traumatic imprint, it's just in the space and it just, it, it just feels bad. Um, I've also had not so dramatic things where somebody kind of does the same routine day after day after day and it feels like they've sort of cut a groove in their house and that's the only groove they know. So, of course, people like that will call me because they say, I feel stuck in my life. Well, I could understand that because you've created a particular groove it's repetitive. It's probably happened day after day over years. And with the space clearing, I clear that groove and they find that all of a sudden they start recognizing more opportunities, more exciting things to do to kind of get people out of their old patterns. It takes a little bit of work, but it's it's very effective. Yeah. And I really liked how you explained the whole process of imprints, because I can see how if there was a really traumatic incident, like the break in, or if there's a pattern like repeatedly arguing, that energy is going to linger, and then it's just going to fuel more arguing. <laughs> and it sounds like transition would be a good time for someone to get a house clearing. Absolutely. Transition is a great time. So whether it's transitioning to a new job, transitioning to a new relationship, anything where somebody wants to make a change rather than fighting against the energy that's already there, you know, that feeling of swimming upstream, a space clearing clears out the old so that something new can come into that person's life. So transition is great, but there's also the transition of um, buying a new house. So you move into a new house, but you don't want to live in the other people's energy. A lot of different neighborhoods I've gone to, they say, oh, you know, this is the divorce house. We have to clear this house <laughs> because the last three people who lived here have gotten divorced and we don't want to get divorced. So Wendy, we need you. Mm. And it's really, really true. I had the coolest experience in a house. The people called me for exactly that reason. They said, all the neighbors are telling us that we just bought the divorce house <laughs> and we don't want to get divorced. So can you come do a space clearing? And I said, sure. So the woman was with me, the, um, the gentleman wasn't home yet. He was going to come home later. As I was doing the space clearing, the first thing that I felt was like, it felt like two houses. Usually I do some of the first parts of the space clearing and I energetically get a sense of the center of the house. In this particular house, it felt like there were two centers. And what I realized is, oh my gosh, I have to make this house become one house so that they don't end up kind of living two separate lives. So when the gentleman came home and I was explaining what happened, you know, what I felt, and he goes, oh, well, that makes sense because, you know, the lady who lived here told me that 
before her and her husband actually got a final divorce and sold this house, he lived on that end of the house and she lived on that end of the house. Oh, and it was like, wow. Oh, I couldn't believe it. I was like, are you kidding me? Because it was exactly what I felt, but I had no information as to why. I felt that. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, you know, I mean, it could have been anything, right? You know, it could have been that part of the house was a remodel. And when they added it on, it didn't quite blend. I mean, it could have been a lot of things. And his wife looked at him and said, I didn't know that. (laughs) He said, oh, yeah. Yeah, she told me that when I was talking to her one day. And it was so funny because everything all of a sudden made perfect sense about why I did the space clearing the way I did it, what I felt, and the results that we got. So it was really, it was really So interesting, you know, because even I'm a bit of a healthy skeptic, you know, Mm -hmm. I go in and I go, well, that, you know, now why am I feeling that? That's strange. And then he totally explained to me why I felt what I felt and why I had to do what I did. So it was really fun for me. So with you being empathic and very intuitive, how would the listener know if their home needs clearing, if they aren't naturally tuned into that type of energy? I think people are much more aware of energy than they realize or they admit to. Hmm. And I think most people can know when they feel stuck or when they feel like they're not productive in their home. And a lot of times people say to me, I have these great ideas when I'm in my car. (laughs) And then I get to my house (laughs) and I I can't come up with any new ideas. So I think people really are aware of energy. They just haven't put two and two together. You know, I want to kind of give the listeners that because they usually, people usually know, but times when they would want a space clearing, let's say they feel stuck in their life, their career or their relationship, or maybe they're just feeling a lack of purpose, like they need to regain a sense of passion for what they do. And like I had said earlier, when you first move into a house, it's always a good time to clear it because you don't want to kind of marinate in somebody else's energy until that becomes your life, you know? Yeah. And when I moved into the current house that I'm in, that is when I had you come clear the space. And yeah, it was very, it was a great time. I was in a period of transition and I didn't even know why I wanted you to come clear my house, but I felt a strong desire and need for you to come help me because of the transition point that I was at and dealing with my mom's passing. And, um, and it was just, it was wonderful. Also, sometimes um, I clear people's homes if there's going to be a big event. So, you know, let's say there's a new baby coming. It's good to have the house cleared to welcome this little angel into somebody's house. You want to have the energy nice for them. Also, I had a really interesting run of space clearings right after 9-11. Now, that wasn't personal, but it's like even though I was doing most of the clearings in California, the fear that 9-11 brought across the country was affecting people's lives. That was affecting the energy in their homes. You know, when there's a a big shift or a big event that happens, whether it's personal or sometimes uh, more global, people respond and react to that. You know, that was traumatic. I mean, people watch their TV for hours around the events on 9-11. And I found a lot of people called me around then. They were really feeling a lot of fear and anxiety and they didn't know what it was about, but something had kind of imprinted in their home around the trauma. And it's also good, of course, you know, if you want to help get rid of clutter, that helps to get that resolved. So yeah, there's lots of reasons. Sometimes it's just that you've had um, house guests for way too long, and then the space doesn't (laughs) feel like it's yours anymore. (laughs) The mother-in-law moves out, time to clear the space. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Or somebody's been really sick, you know, Mm. time to clear the space. Or injury. Somebody's had a, you know, a significant injury, and there's been a rehab period. We want to clear that out. So... And then what type of benefits can people look forward to after having their house cleared and blessed with this process? You know, there's a lot of different things because it's so individualized. There's a lot of things that happen for my clients. And um, 
some of the things that happen are really funny to me. I mean, I'm sure they're not funny to them. You know, and there's lots and lots of testimonials on my website as well. But for example, one day I went and I did a space clearing and the woman was very upset because she had just recently lost one of her cats. When they had recently moved into this house, the cat, like three days before I arrived for the space clearing, the cat had run away. And so I did the space clearing. You know, she told me, but She didn't make a big deal about it. So I kind of had that in mind, but, you know, that wasn't our main focus. So her husband called as I was about to leave and she asked me to wait one second. I waited and she got off the phone. She said, that was my husband. Somebody just called him. Somebody had found their cat, called her husband because his number was on the cat's tag. And she wanted to let me know that that's how fast the space clearing worked. Wow. I said, wait a minute. Did you put that intention to find your cat into the Harmony Ball when we were putting a new intention into your home? And she said, yes. And I thought, oh, my God, that's (laughs) crazy. Right. I said, don't tell anyone because I don't want everybody to call me when they lose, you know, when their animals run away. Like, that's not what I want. But it was just interesting. Another person called me. She said, oh, after you space cleared, I want a guitar. And I was like, what? Wow. And she goes, I always wanted a guitar. Like it was something I wanted to take guitar lessons. I wanted to have my own guitar. I said, did you put that in your harmony ball? And she was like, yes, I did. I was like, oh, my God. You're, you know, so some of them are just really funny to me. Some people find checks in their clutter that, you know, they can still cash. And But other things are like people are able to get projects done that, that they've had on hold for years. Or um, they just say that there's a new sense of peace that's come into the house or their, or their home feels like a sanctuary Some of the things that are quite beautiful is when people feel a really strong reconnection to themselves or to their higher purpose, you know, a sense of relief or acceptance that comes when your home is tranquil, you know, because sometimes the world is just very busy and, and kind of harsh and people get a bit disconnected from their own inner peace and the space clearing brings that back. Now, in businesses, there's often more prosperity that's reported. Back east, there was a gentleman who owned a car lot. They had been slow. They hadn't been selling cars. So his wife said, you know, please let this lady come. And he was like, oh, I don't know, kind of crazy. And so he he finally agreed. And it was funny because I did the space clearing with his wife in the building. So in the in the business office for the car lot. As I was leaving somebody was coming onto the lot to look at cars. And I thought, well, you know, that's good. Okay. The woman, his wife, emailed me and said, after you left, you remember that man that was coming onto the car lot to talk to my husband? He actually bought the car. (laughs) (laughs) It was really, you know, those things crack me up. Because like I said, I'm a bit of a skeptic. But people call me and I go, are you kidding me? That's so funny. Yeah. You know, and they're like, well, what do you mean? Like, this is what you do. I go, I know, but it's always so different. And the results are always so personal that when they tell me what the results are, sometimes I just have to laugh because I think, isn't that funny that what I do actually helps on all those different levels. Yeah. And I love the concept that as you are clearing the energetic clutter, so to speak, then that just opens the pathways for, you know, people to tune into themselves and to receive more abundance and move forward on their path. Yeah, it's quite fun. So now you talked about clearing imprints in a house. Have you ever run across for lack of a better word, spirits or maybe souls who have passed and are lingering in a house or anything like that? Actually, yes. The thing is, I don't call them souls or spirits or even ghosts because the way I see them, it's really just a fragment. So you don't have a whole soul or a whole person. You have a fragment, which is really usually just sort of a bit of their personality, but it's very holographic. So even though it's just a fragment of somebody's personality, so it's got a bit of consciousness on it, but 
it's not the whole person because, you know, the spirit soul goes where it's supposed to go regardless. But these little fragments do break off and they lodge themselves in earth lines. And I have seen that in homes and I've actually had people call me because they thought that there was something weird going on in their house. In fact, I just did that uh, just a couple weeks ago. And so it's a different kind of clearing. So I usually do a space clearing to get a really good sense of where this thing is lodged. And then I do a separate kind of clearing that actually clears the fragment or the entity or, you know, whatever you want to call that thing that stays. You know, it's not quite as sensationalized as they do in the movies. Um, (laughs) No spinning heads or... (laughs) No poltergeist stuff. It's usually just something that's in the wrong place and it should have gone with the rest of the spirit, but it didn't. And so my job is to just kind of send it to the light where it should have gone to in the, in the first place, it should have gone there and it it didn't. So Hmm. now you mentioned the harmony ball. So like I said, I hired you to come clear my house and the process took three to four hours. So it's a, it's a very thorough and, and deep, I guess, process. So can you walk the listener through maybe the high level points of what you do so that they know kind of what it would look like if you came into their home? Sure. Yeah. So the first thing I do when I come is I listen to the person. I like to really have my clients speak into the space what they want for their life. So not so much what they don't want, but what they do want. And as I'm listening, I'm also feeling the energy in the home and feeling what resonates. You know, they might say that they want this and I feel a particular block or something that's actually keeping them from getting what they want. So as soon as I get there and I start talking, so that's the first part where we just chat, you know, and you tell me what you want. And then I go around and I actually do a more thorough reading of the of the energy in the space by going around the house one time and feeling my first impressions of the home. Then the process is for me to set up like a work area or I call it a personal altar because what it does is it, it holds their intention for what they want in their life. And that's where I put everything that I'm going to use. So when I do the space clearing, I use flower offerings. I do clapping and I use the beautiful Balinese bells um, that have been hand forged. What I'm doing is I'm listening to what the person wants, recognizing what's in the space that does not match their intention for their life, and then clearing that out by using flower offerings, clapping and bells. And then once I get the house clear, so it's sort of like we're starting from, you know, ground zero, we have a new clean space. Then I have my clients put their intention for their life into their newly cleared home or office. And that has to be done by the client. That's not something that I give a lot of input on, well, mostly because it'd be really bad karma for me to say, I think I know what you need. Um, They need to really decide and own what it is that they want for themselves, which is why I was saying, you know, when the lady got her cat back or the person won the guitar, I always say, did you put that in your harmony bowl? Because that's the part where I really leave it to them. It's almost like I own the space for a time. I shift the energy. And then as a way to hand the space back to the person, I have them put their hopes, dreams, aspirations back into the house. So at first they show me around the house, they give the house to me, I clean it up, I hand the house back to them, and they put their intention into it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the fact that you recognize the importance of the connection between the client and their home. You know, you're more of a facilitator when it comes to manifesting what they want. Right. Right. What would you say to skeptics or left brain types, perhaps, who don't believe energy in a house can be cleared or maybe even needs to be cleared? Well, like I said, I think most people have some sort of recognition. You know, most people recognize what it feels like when you walk into a space where people have had an argument. 
But really, if you look back over time, if you look to indigenous people and their traditions, they all incorporated some sort of clearing or cleansing rituals. You know, sometimes it was for healing, sometimes it was for spiritual enlightenment, but it was really common when people really paid attention to the land, to their environment. And so there's all sorts of rituals that go back over time that people used. But even if you look at nowadays, I remember my mom used to do this thing where she would open every single window and door in the house and just let the wind blow through the house because it brought something that felt more vital or revitalized or refreshed or people recognize that people who know that at some point you have to open the windows and let things air out Space clearing really is just a much deeper level of that with maybe more profound results. But I think people recognize that places get stuffy and stagnant. And so it's really more about checking into how you really feel. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think it's, I actually think it's really good to be skeptical. (laughs) (laughs) Because that's the way I've learned the most by looking at what I do and saying to myself, wait a minute, why does that work? And really, really putting my attention, my vision, my knowingness onto it. It's helped me actually become a much better space clearer. So I love when people say to me, why are you doing that? Why, you know, like Mm -hmm. I love that because one, it means they're getting more involved, which is always beautiful to have the client like really involved and, and interested. But the other thing is it actually helps me map out exactly what I'm doing in their home. So I think, I mean, personally, I really like skeptics because they ask questions. And how do you learn anything if you don't ask the question? Mm -hmm. And try it out for yourself and see what kind of results you get. Exactly. You know, I think even skeptical people notice when a place feels really creepy Mm -hmm. (laughs) or if a place feels really good. I mean, talk about the difference between, say, going to Alcatraz, right? Like, that's a creepy place. Yeah. I remember even one time being in the Hotel Dell and going into one area of the hotel and going, oh, gosh, there's something wrong in this part. You know what I mean? I think even skeptical people register something or like when you go into a beautiful garden, you know, a meditation garden or something like that. And you can feel that the energy there is really beautiful. I remember one time my mom, who's the lady who used to open all the windows, she came out to visit me and I brought her to the self-realization fellowship to their meditation gardens. Mm, I love that place. Yeah. And she said to me, oh my gosh, Wendy, this is such a peaceful place. Why haven't you ever brought me here before? And I thought, I didn't know that she would recognize the energy, but she did. And I mean, I'm skeptical probably because my mother's skeptical. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And even like my mom had the sense of, oh my gosh, there is such a relaxed and peaceful feeling here. So just because somebody's skeptical doesn't mean that they can't feel. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and to tune into that. Right, yeah. Now, why are you qualified to do energetic space clearing like this? Can anyone just do this on their own at home? (laughs) Kids, don't try this at (laughs) home. Actually, I believe if people really wanted to do this, that they could. So I have done a lot a lot of work on my personal body of energy. So what does that mean? When I first started space clearing, I meditated sometimes, but I never really worked on clearing my own stuff, my personal stuff. Like I didn't have a technique that worked really, really well to do that. So when I went into different homes, uh, as I was training, I was actually picking up the energy of the homes and kind of bringing it home with me because I didn't know how to clear my own energy well enough. And I got quite sick. So this was during my training. And when I say I got quite sick, what I mean is I would do a space clearing one day 
And the next day I would be flat on my back, exhausted, not knowing how to revitalize my own energy. So what happened is I actually began to be part of a school of meditation where they not only teach personal energetic clearing, but also how to process your own emotions by going back to the source of whatever patterns of behavior you have. So as I went through my space clearing training, I also started doing this level of work, which means I was meditating regularly to build up my body of energy. But I was also doing a process called IST, which is an inner space technique. And that was clearing my energy of like residual, emotional, mental trauma kind of reactions by going to the source. Let me give an example to help. Through an IST process, you go back to the source of why you behave in a particular way. And often that brings us back to our childhood. Because as children, we're really sponge-like. We pick up everything. So if someone is sad in the house you live in, you think you're sad. If someone has a particular belief system, you take it on as your belief system. And those things build up over time and they kind of mess up the clarity in our own body of energy because we start to carry clutter in our energy. By really clearing my energy, by doing etheric cleansing, but also by really clearing my energy, or maybe even you might say my psyche, I was able to feel more because I didn't have all this padding on anymore. I started to clear that stuff out. And so it's the padding that we build around ourselves to protect ourselves or to make sure that we don't get hurt or, but by dropping some of that, as well as beginning to feel more of who or what I really am, my energy completely shifted. So when I go into a home, I'm not projecting my stuff on the home, but I'm also not picking up the stuff in the home and bringing it back to my house with me because I have a very clear distinction of what's me and what's not me. It takes some work to get your body of energy really healthy to the point where you could do this kind of work without picking up everybody else's stuff, but it's not impossible. Yes, I said at the beginning, I started out as an empath, but that's not the only tool that I use now. There's a much greater ability for me to have a certain kind of vision because of the work I've done on my energy. And I believe anybody who really wants it could do this same work, build their body of energy up in a certain way so that they can be trained to do space clearing without doing damage to themselves and get the kind of results I get. Yeah, I would think that keeping your energetic body clear is really important going into so many different spaces. And and I like how you laid out that imagery of how you clearing your internal clutter has really opened up your gifts. And you mentioned all this work that you've done in your personal energy. And I know that this has opened up your gifts in other areas such as meditation and grief counseling. So tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah. So, you know, this is probably my favorite part about being a space clear is that I have to work on myself all the time. (laughs) (laughs) I have to constantly be clearing my own personal clutter internally, like you said. I have a daily meditation practice. I meditate for an hour every day. And because I love that so much, I have actually um, been trained to teach meditation. And so I teach a meditation, it's called Awakening the Third Eye, because the third eye is really just an organ of perception. Everybody has a third eye, but not everybody's third eye is awakened. And so the meditation I teach is to awaken the third eye, but also to teach people how to use this organ of perception in daily life. I love it because it doesn't just help somebody learn to meditate. It helps somebody learn how to live their life from a space that's more rich. It's less reactive. It's more intuitive. 
And so it's really about the first step in building this body of energy that I've been talking about. As far as the grief recovery, and I call it grief recovery, not so much grief counseling, because we don't just talk about grief. I actually give people the action steps that are necessary to come to a place of completion. And the reason why I've added that into my kind of repertoire of things that I do is because I found a lot of people carry unresolved grief, and that's often the source of their dissatisfaction in life. It makes it much more difficult to really be happy, like truly happy when you're carrying around unresolved emotional feelings. It tends to hold people back. So between the private work that I've done with my clients and also the space clearings where I see some of the blocks that people have, a lot of it is around grief and loss. It's become another thing that I've added because it really helps people come to a place of completion so that they're really complete today. Yeah, that sounds like a really natural transition or a natural thing to add to your toolkit. Yeah, I think we all carry a little bit of um, a little sense of loss sometimes, you know? Yeah. And the problem, at least for me in my life, was that I was never taught any tools on how to deal with grief and how to process grief and process your feelings. So it's just something that isn't really emphasized in our culture. I agree. And I think people are afraid of grief. Like you said, there's a lot of misinformation And so I've actually, I've worked with the Grief Recovery Institute to learn how to help people recover from grief by giving them information that actually works and giving them action steps to take so that they can complete anything that feels incomplete around a loss that they've had in their life. Yeah. A loss is a loss and grief is very individual. Everybody feels it their own way. But it's real. It's real. Yeah. Well, Wendy, thank you so much. This was so enlightening. And I think you made it very clear how your process of space clearing is definitely different than just Mm -hmm. waving around some sage in your house. So um, I really encourage the listener to go ahead. And if, you know, if they're feeling stuck going through transition to go ahead and give you a call and experience what it could be like. What's the best way for a listener to contact you? Well, email is always great. And my email address is wendy at wendyfreer.com. And it's spelled funny. (laughs) (laughs) So you spell my name, W-E-N-N-D-I, at Wendy Freer. And that's W-E-N-N-D-I-F-R-E-E-R.com. Okay, perfect. Well, before I let you go, I always like to switch gears with guests and ask some fun questions. Mm, Um, So the first question is, what type of car would you be and why? Oh, (laughs) I would be something really fast. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) because there's something about sitting in a car that really performs. Like I had a very old Mercedes Benz that had a really big engine in it. It was 20 years old and this car still drove really well. It was tight. It was fast. It could maneuver. I felt super safe because it really was built like a tank. And boy, when I put my foot on the gas, it responded. And, you know, before that, I had always had a little bit lighter cars. And, you know, you kind of put your foot on the gas and the car kind of goes, huh, you talking to me? (laughs) (laughs) Those have been my cars. (laughs) But this car, oh, and Kim, I got to tell you, I felt so much safer in a fast, high performance car because I could get out of trouble. If I was in trouble, I could pass and feel really safe. Yeah, I'd be a, I'd probably, I'd probably go back to that old Mercedes Benz. Nice, nice. (laughs) Well, speaking of getting out of trouble, uh, that leads me to the second question. What was the worst thing you got in trouble for with your parents? Oh, really? Not having your Mercedes getaway car. (laughs) (laughs) So 
when I was a young high school student, I got caught spray painting a rival high school's wall. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we had this rivalry with another high school. And for some reason, we thought we would just go spray paint one of the walls at their school. And we got caught. And my parents made me pay. You know, in those days, you know, it was kind of silly kid stuff. (laughs) And so in those days, basically, our punishment was we had to pay for sandblasting. Oh, wow. Yeah. So those of us who were involved had to take money out of our own checking account to get the high school sandblasted immediately. Ooh, wow. Yeah, that hits you where it hurts. So so I learned my lesson there. (laughs) And we didn't have a fast enough getaway car. (laughs) Well, and your career as a graffiti artist did not come to fruition. It did not. It did not. (laughs) All right. And lastly, what's the number one thing on your bucket list? Um, Gosh, you know, that's such a great question. And I don't think I really know. Hmm. There's something about going to the Himalayas that kind of calls to me, but I don't know what that is. Hmm, That's interesting. I would say that. Yeah, that's a very specific place. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe your number one thing is finding out what that's about. Maybe. Yeah. Who knows? All right, Wendy. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. It was wonderful having you here, and I learned so much. Thanks, and have a great rest of your week. Thanks, Kim. For this week's Woo Woo News Corner, I found many articles that cited a study published by the Journal of Ethnopharmacology, which found that medicinal smoke reduces airborne bacteria. The study burned medicinal smoke for one hour and reduced aerial bacteria by 94%. Naturally, all of the alternative health groups jumped all over this study. This then brought me to a blog called Skeptophilia, written by Gordon Bonnet, who wasn't so eager to jump on the sage cheer train. On July 16, 2015, Skeptophilia's blog raised a few really legitimate questions, such as A, how many pathogenic bacteria were in the room to start with, as 94% of a tiny amount is even tinier. B, are there any chemicals in smudging smoke that are toxic to humans as well? And C, are there other chemicals in the smoke besides the bacteria-killing ones that might be harmful? As he said, inhaling smoke of any kind seems like a bad idea. I'll post Skeptophilia's blog on the Facebook page. I just really liked how Mr. Bonnet went into the detail of his research in answering these questions that he raised. He concluded that, on one hand, incense and smudging smoke smells good and kills nasty bacteria. On the other hand, is it possible that the bacteria never would have made you sick in the first place? His last paragraph is, quote, What we really should be doing, even more than burning dead plants in our house, is asking questions, not simply buying whatever you read at fact value. In other words, recognizing that there are questions to be asked is the first step, unquote. And I couldn't agree more. Thank you for listening to Woo Woo for the Skeptic. I would love to hear from you if you have ideas for a show or want to give feedback on an episode. And as always, I offer a 30% discount to you on a counseling and energy healing session with me. And if you enjoyed this episode, subscribe to the podcast so that you never miss a show. And now for your moment of woo. This quote comes from Dr. Christiane Northrup. Your surroundings, home, personal care, pets, clothing, and body are all reflections of how you see and express yourself. Do these reflect your true self? Have a great week, everyone.